enjoyed that uh, beautiful play in there this evening and so thankful just a closer walk with thee and uh, I know that's my desire tonight is to try my best to have a closer walk with the Lord uh, each and every day and uh, joy down in my heart I'm so thankful for that joy that we have this evening through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and uh, it's so good to be back this evening we want to welcome you Thank you for tuning in and watching tonight. We do ask for your prayers this evening that we'll try our best just to follow the Lord. Uh, hope and pray that uh, I believe the Lord has a good service in store for us. So we just encourage you to worship with us tonight at home. Uh, we encourage you to, to follow along with us through God's Word tonight as we try our best to follow the Lord and preach what God has given us. And uh, we just encourage you to go uh, to the Lord uh, with us in a word of prayer here in just a few minutes. And I want to uh, make mention this evening that we want to continue to remember the lost most of all tonight when we pray. Uh, let's pray for the lost that we have in our community. Let's remember our uh, lost family members, our lost friends, co-workers. Uh, let's continue to remember the, the viewers that we maybe even have tonight that are watching that's lost. And doesn't know the Lord as our Savior and as their Lord, we just ask and pray that uh, the Lord would speak to their heart and give them an opportunity to call on His name unto salvation. Let's remember them tonight. Let's continue to remember all of our medical workers, remember them that uh, on the front lines, continue to pray for their health and their safety. Let's continue to remember not only their physical health, but also their mental health through this time. So let's continue to pray for them. Let's remember tonight also, uh, continue to remember Evelyn Fallbush, remember her daughter Susan that's recovering from uh, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, remember Susan's husband and three daughters as well had tested positive. So continue to pray for them. Be much in prayer for them tonight as well. Let's continue to remember uh, our governor when we pray. Remember Governor Bill Lee. Uh, let's continue to pray that God would give him the guidance and direction that, that he needs to lead us as a state. Uh, and let's just continue to remember all those that have been affected uh, by the virus that are, that are sick. Let's pray for them tonight that uh, God would touch them and uh, would give healing to them. Let's remember the ones that have lost loved ones through this time as well. Continue to pray that God would comfort them with his Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's go to the uh, Lord in a word of prayer tonight, uh, and then after we have prayer, uh, we're going to share just a, a special five-minute video with uh, Brother Randy Davis from Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. He has a message for us, and uh, we want to share that this evening. So after that, April's going to come and sing, play, so you be much in prayer for her, and uh, remember the rest of this service tonight. But let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for just another opportunity and Lord, uh, truly is a privilege to be able to come and Lord, be uh, in your house this evening, Father, Lord, just to worship you, Father, through the beautiful playing. Father, we're so thankful that, Father, uh, we pray tonight, Lord, that God, you would help us all, Lord, to have more of a desire to have a closer walk with you, Lord. We pray you forgive us of our sin. Father, forgive us, Lord, for where we fail you, Lord, and where we come short. God, we thank you for the joy that, God, that you can give us, Lord, down deep inside of our heart and our soul. God, we pray tonight that, Father, Lord, you would be ever near, Lord, to the lost ones uh, that we have on our heart this evening. I know that we all have lost friends and family members and, and co-workers, Father. We, we have lost people in our community that, Lord, we're praying for. And, and God, we have lost people tonight that may be watching and may be viewing from home or wherever they may be. We just ask and pray that, Father, through your Holy Spirit, that, God, you would use us and help us to be a witness and a light to them, Father, for you. We pray that, God, you would speak to their heart and deal in their heart. God, we pray and we ask tonight that, Lord, you would give them that invitation and that opportunity that only your Holy Spirit can give, Father. And, Lord, just uh, I pray that, Father, Lord, that they would accept you and believe on you, Lord, and call on your name, Father, through faith. And, Lord, just accept you as their Savior and as their Lord. We pray tonight that, God, you would continue, Father, to be with the ones that are sick, that, Father, are facing uh, the COVID-19 virus. We pray that, God, you would continue, Lord, just to put your hand of healing, Father, upon those, Father, throughout this world. Lord, we pray for the ones that, Father, we have in our own community. We pray for the ones we have in our state. 
And Lord, in this country, we ask, Father, for your healing hand of protection and your healing hand, Father, upon them, Lord, knowing that, God, you still are the great physician, and we thank you, and we know that. We pray tonight, Father, that, Lord, you continue to be with the ones that, Father, Lord, are not sick, that, Lord, you would just continue to, to put your hedge of protection, Father, around us, Lord, and, and just wrap us up, Father, and keep us, Father, safe, we pray. And we ask tonight that, God, you be with our governor. We pray, Father, for uh, uh, Governor Bill Lee, that, Lord, you would just continue to lead him and give him the direction, the wisdom, and the guidance that, Father, he needs, Lord, and uh, the next couple of days, the next week, and the next month, Father, as he uh, plans to lead us, Father, through this challenging time that we're facing, we ask that you be ever near to him. God, we pray that you continue to be with our president and our vice president. We pray, Father, for the medical leaders, that, Lord, you'll continue to lead them, and God, guide them and direct them, Father. Lord, we pray that, Father, you would be with the health care workers, Lord, that are on the front line. We Pray, Father, for their physical health, that, Lord, you would touch them and, and, and just protect and keep them safe and healthy. We pray not only that, but, Father, for their mental health as well, that, God, you would be with them. God, we just pray tonight that, Lord, you bless the remainder of this service. We uh, pray that, God, you just bless the singing, help us to worship and praise you, Father, in that. We pray tonight that, God, you would also uh, help us, Lord, just to worship you and, and hear from your word, Lord, and hear from heaven, God, as you speak to our hearts this evening. We love you and we thank you, and all this we ask in your name. Amen. You know, the great missionary William Carey said that uh, we are to attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. As I have listened to pastors and laymen from all across our state, I hear of churches in every setting from every size that are absolutely attempting to do some great things for God in responding to this COVID-19 crisis and I believe with all my heart, we can expect some great things from God. There are two things that I want you to continue to pray with me and others about. Number one, there'll be a great spiritual awakening in our churches. It's been well over a generation since we have seen the last great awakening in the United States of America. That was the Jesus movement of the 70s and 80s. And the, the, the second thing that I'm praying for is that there's going to be a great harvest. Any way you slice it, Tennessee is a mission field. And over the past five or six weeks, the gospel has been heard through the Internet by more people than we've ever had gathered in our churches. So my prayer is that uh, we will realize that God's word is not going to come back void and we're going to see a harvest of spiritually lost people coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm encouraged by hearing from these heroes, our pastors, our ministry leaders, our laymen, and what all they're doing in the kingdom of God. And I have a very high degree, higher now than ever, of trust in these pastors and church leaders all across our state. As we think about entering back into a time when we're going to be gathering together, you must look at your own local circumstances and make the very best decision that you possibly can. Certainly respect, it is biblical, it is a biblical admonition that we respect our governmental leaders, that we pray for them, that we listen to them. But I would also give a great deal of weight to listening to the healthcare professionals, listening to the people that are following this COVID-19 disease and know how we should respond and protect, not only protect our people, the people that are vulnerable in our congregations, but also protect our testimony in our communities about how we are responding. Tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, April the 22nd, tomorrow we are coming out with what we are calling uh, a guide for gathering together again. And it'll be things that we should consider as we plan on coming together again. It'll be more along the lines of just questions that we need to think about. Now, in about a week, 
we're going to follow up this initial guide with a second guide that is far more specific. We don't have many specifics from the governor at this time about opening up for business again by May 1st. What does that mean? What does it mean in social distancing? How does it affect large gatherings? We're going to find out answers to those questions and pass them on to you as quickly as we possibly can. Hey, I would invite you to join us this Thursday night for our third prayer meeting. We want you to come and join us on Facebook Live at the Tennessee Baptist uh, Facebook web uh, uh, site. You come on and join us there, and we're going to have a great time at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. Just a wonderful time of prayer led by pastors from all across our state. I look forward to seeing you very, very uh, soon on Thursday night. God bless you. I'm praying for you, and it is a joy be on this journey with you as we serve Tennessee Baptist churches. save an old sinner uh, like me and I'm so thankful uh, for his grace and his mercy and his love that he shows to us each and every day and uh, I do encourage us tonight that we would continue to pray um, as brother Randy had mentioned
mention there this evening, let's continue to remember uh, to be much in prayer for uh, not only as uh, Brother Randy encouraged us to pray for a great awakening, a uh, spiritual awakening, uh, but not only that, but also a, a great spiritual harvest to come with that. And uh, I think that um, we are living in a time where uh, that uh, we, we could grow closer to the Lord. And uh, we, we're living in a day and an age where uh, as the church of the living God, uh, we've got such a great work and we've got such a great mission that we can do. And we're living in a day uh, with the technology. We've got all the resources that we need to be able uh, to utilize, uh, to put forth to work, to be able to help us reach a world for Jesus Christ. So be much in prayer for that. I encourage you to pray. Remember uh, our church as we pray, as uh, leadership, leaders in our church, as we continue to pray and we communicate and meet and we talk about uh, the upcoming uh, weeks and, and even uh, for the upcoming month ahead. So let's be much in prayer for that. Remember us as you pray. Uh, if you have your Bibles this evening, I want to share some scripture with you that uh, uh, that I've been it's been laid on my heart there today. That uh, as I read over this, it just kind of stayed with me. So I want to share this with you tonight. It comes from the book of Exodus, chapter thirteen. Exodus chapter thirteen, and uh, we're going to begin reading with verse uh, seventeen in the book of Exodus, chapter thirteen. And we do ask. Uh, for your prayers tonight, that we'll try our best to follow the Lord and uh, just preach what God has given us. But um, as I begin to pray for today and as I begin to pray and, and study and uh, several scriptures uh, had come on my heart and, and I have just not gotten settled at all today on what the Lord uh, wanted to, to preach tonight. And uh, uh, as I begin to read more this afternoon, this evening, uh, the Lord had given this to me, and it, this has just stayed with me for tonight. So I want to share this with you. I hope and pray that, uh, be much in prayer that God had just blessed tonight and that he would preach exactly what he wants preached this evening. But we're going to be reading from the book of Exodus chapter 13, and we're going to start with verse number 17. And just to give you a little uh, a back, uh, I guess a little history of, of where we're at here in the book of Exodus um, I know a couple weeks ago we looked into Exodus chapter number 12 and we know that through Exodus chapter number 12 that was how God came to Moses and to Aaron and he instituted the Passover and uh, he gave them exactly how they should partake and how they should eat and what they should do with the Passover. And uh, we know that it was by the blood of the Lamb that it was applied to the, the two side, the two doorposts and the lintel of the home that when the death angel come by, uh, that he passed over that house that had the blood applied to it. And we know that through the teaching of the scripture, we find that the Bible said that even that night that Pharaoh had lost his own child uh, there, the one that was to, to be the sitting on the throne in Egypt, uh, we know that uh, that through that night that Pharaoh called Moses and he called Aaron. He said to take the children, uh, to take their flocks, to take their herds, and, and to leave and to get out and to go and worship their God as they had said. And we know that from that night the Bible said that while they were on their way that uh, that, that God had blessed the children of Israel to be able to uh, take the spools of the Egyptians and there was gold and, and different things that was taken that night that was given uh, to them on their way out. And the Bible teaches us and tells us that when uh, the children of Israel, it said in verse 37, it said, and when they had journeyed from Ramses to, Suc to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside the children. We know that when they left Egypt, they went to this place called Sukkoth, and that was where they encamped very first thing after they had brought, been brought out of Egypt. So we're going to pick up here that uh, we find that God had come to the children of Israel, and he told them that the firstborn from their flocks and uh, would be sanct sanctified uh, by God. Uh, he told them of, about the memorial of the Passover. He also shared with them about how important that it was, the firstlings of the flock and the firstlings of the ground, uh, different things like that. So we find here in chapter, or chapter 13, 
Verse 17, the Bible says this, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near, for God said, lest preadventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And when they, journeyed, when they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of the fire by night from before the people. And that's all we would let, like to read uh, for right now. Verse number 17 there, the Bible said that it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines. When you begin to study on this, and if you will uh, begin to go back and maybe you've got access to a, uh, a map of the Bible times, but when you, begun, when you begin to look at that and study uh, on the map, when you find where the children of Israel were when they left uh, Egypt, and they come to this place, uh, Suk Sukkoth, uh, we find that where this place was, that it was uh, closer, uh, it was a lot nearer to go by the way of the Philistines, as the Bible said. Uh, if they went by the way of the Philistines, if they went this way, not only would it have been closer, uh, not only would it have been uh, a lot closer to where they were trying to get, uh, but also uh, they would not have had to go through the Red Sea. Uh, but we find here in verse number 17, it said that God led them. Uh, one thing that we've got to remember here tonight is, is that God uh, led his people. God led his children out of Egyptian bondage. He led them out of Egypt. And when he led them out of Egypt, the first place he brought them to, there was Sukkoth. And we find that a little bit about that place. We know that uh, from early, earlier in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we know, we find that it was a town uh, where Jacob and his family, where they dwelt. And this is where Jacob built booths for his cattle and uh, the, for his family to dwell there uh, after that him and Esau had been separated. So uh, not only that, but we also find that this was the first place uh, that the children of Israel, where they set up camp, where they encamped after God had led them and brought them out of Egypt. So we find here that uh, God began to, uh, as Moses began to write, he shared with us here that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Uh, sometimes uh, when God is leading us through this life, uh, this journey of life that we are on, that we are on, uh, when God is leading us, God does not always lead us on the nearest route. God doesn't always lead us on the quickest route. God doesn't always lead us on the closest route to where we are going. Uh, but we find here that God did not lead them through the way of the Philistines and up toward Gath and all that. But we find that the Bible said that God. God led them, but led the people about uh, through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. That was the way. That was the path that God had chose to lead his people through. Now, the reason why that God chose to lead his people through, uh, first off, we're going to look at tonight, the scripture said in verse 17, it said, although uh, that was near, talking about the way of the Philistine, the path of the Philistine, it says that God said, less pre-adventure. That word pre-adventure means this. It means perhaps or it may be. So 
perhaps, or may it be, or pre-adventure, the people repent when they see war. Uh, number one there, when the people see war, God said that when they see this, they may say, hey, listen, we're going to turn back. We're going to repent. We're going to turn completely around. We're going to go in a different direction. We're going to go in a different way. That's what that word repent means. It means to repent. It means to turn completely from the direction and from the way that you are going and to go in another way, to go in another path. So God's saying, listen, uh, if we went by the way of the Philistines, if we went this way, that when we get there, when the people see war, it says they may repent, or perhaps they do, and they return to Egypt. So God, uh, number one, the way they didn't go through the Philistine way was that when they got there, that the people may see the war and repent and go another way and go back to Egypt. Number one tonight, the people was not ready to see war. The people wasn't ready to see war. They wasn't ready to face a battle. They wasn't ready to face uh, a war of anything because God was fixing to prove himself to the people. These people were slaves. These people were in bondage. My friend, no doubt they were not probably even in the physical shape nor the mental shape nor were they uh, as a faith or as spiritually. They were not in a condition. They were not in shape to be prepared for battle or for war at this point in time in their life. So God knew that when they went this way and when they faced adversity, when they faced conflict, when they faced battle, when they faced war, they would turn and go back to Egypt. They would go back to the place of where God had brought them out of. They would go back to bondage. They would go back to being owned by Pharaoh once again. They would return as slaves. And that was what God did not want for his people because God had set them free with a great price. God had set them free with the blood of the lamb and by the death of the firstborn. God had set them free and brought them out by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. God had provided and God had made a way for his people and he did not want them to go back again to Egypt. I thought about that and the Lord reminded me today as I began to think about this a little bit more and, and pray on it. God knows exactly what you and I are made of. God knows exactly tonight what we can handle. God knows what we can face and God knows where we're at in our life physically, many, mentally, spiritually. Uh, he knows what we're able to face and come in contact with. And my friend, listen, God leads us in the way that he would have us to go. And listen, my friend, you and I today, it is so important that we be led by God, that God is the great leader, that he leads his people still today. He leads us by his Holy Spirit. He leads us by his word and he directs us and guides us in the way we should go. God knows exactly the path that he would have for each and every one of us this evening. Not only that, but we find here that God doesn't want us going back to our bondage, does he? No, he doesn't want us going back to Egypt. He doesn't want us going back to that bondage of sin and that life as a servant and as a slave to sin. Jesus said this in the scripture of John chapter number eight. He said, any man that is a sin, he's a servant of that sin. But Jesus said this. He said, if the son hath made you free, you're free indeed. Amen. If Jesus has saved you, and my friend, he has set you free. And Jesus desires that we walk in the way of God, that we don't go back to sin, that we don't go back to that lifestyle under uh, being a servant of sin or under a slave to that bondage, but yet he wants us to walk in that freedom, to walk in that liberty, to walk in that newness of life that Jesus Christ has saved us and given us. Amen. 
So we find here, as he said, that they would repent, they would return back to Egypt. So uh, God here, in verse number 18, the Bible says, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And it said, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And we find here in verse 18 that when that God chose the way to lead them was by the way through the wilderness of the Red Sea. Now you think about that for just a minute. You say, preacher, why in the world would, would the Lord take these people? When you look on a map, man, he went probably the longest way around and through that you could get to to where they were going. You see, if they just left Egypt, they could have went up by the way of the, uh, the Philistines and man, they could have been up there close to where the Jordan River was probably in no time. They could have crossed the Jordan River and been in the land of Canaan and, done, and been where they needed to be. But yet that wasn't the way that God wanted for them. You see, because God was fixing to prepare the people. He was going to prepare them and get them ready for Canaan land. You see, if they went, uh, they weren't ready for battle yet. Their faith wasn't ready. Uh, their, their trust in God it wasn't ready yet, but God was getting ready to prove himself by the way of the Red Sea. Amen? And we know according to the scripture and according to the word of God that when they come out of Egypt, the Bible said they went to Sukkoth and then they went here to, uh, to a place called Etham. And when they got there, it said they journeyed on from there. And that was where they came to the place of the Red Sea. And my friend, when they got to the Red Sea, they looked and they saw that, man, there was nowhere to go. They were going to have to go straight through. And the Bible said that while they were there, that the people of, uh, of Israel, that when they got to the edge of the sea, they said they looked back and you know who was coming? It was Pharaoh. Pharaoh and all of his army of the Egyptians. And man, they were coming after the people. They were going to bring them back to Egypt. They were going not going to let them get away. They were going to bring them back as their slaves. But the Bible said the people began to cry and they began to complain they said, Moses, why has God brought us out of Egypt? Well, has he brought us out into this wilderness because there wasn't enough graves uh, for us to be buried in? And it said that God began to call unto, or Moses began to call unto God. And we know that God told him, he said, listen, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And we know that day that God parted the waters and the children walked over on dry ground. And we know that once everybody got across, it said that Pharaoh and his armies it said they went after them. They continued to pursue the children of Israel. But it said that once they got all the way, almost halfway through the sea, that God caused the waters uh, to come on the, uh, on the people of Pharaoh and his army. And God destroyed Pharaoh and his armies that day. And he gave his people, Israel, a great victory over their enemies. God proved himself to Israel that day by the Red Sea. He proved to them that when there is no way, God can make a way. When there was an ocean standing in the in, right in front of them, God parted. He did something miraculous. He did something that only God could do. He parted this water. And my friend, there became two walls on each side. And they walked over not on wet or damp ground, but they walked over on dry ground. It was only something that God himself could do. And he proved himself to Israel that day. Not only did he prove himself to Israel by the Red Sea, but he proved himself by destroying the very armies of Pharaoh how God allowed those waters to come back together and how it swallowed up Pharaoh and all his army there in the midst of the Red Sea and how they drowned and how God brought a great victory that day for his people. You see, from that place then they journeyed on to a place called Mara and the people, they wanted a drink of water but the Bible said the waters there, they were very bitter and it said that God told Moses, said, here's Moses, here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go over here and I want you to take one of these trees. I want you to cut down this tree and cast it into the water there of Mara. And the Bible said that when Moses did that, when he obeyed the word of God and he cast that tree into the waters of Mara, those waters that were bitter 
bitter. Those waters that were no good to drink, yet the Bible said they became sweet and that God provided a way for His people there. He gave them water. Not only did He provide them the waters there at Marah, but He gave them water from the rock and He gave them bread and manna from heaven. Listen, God was proving Himself to His people. Not only when they went through the Red Sea, you know, if they went up by the way of the Philistines, they would have missed Mount Sinai. They would have missed the mountain of God, Mount Horeb. You see, because they come to this place, Mount Sinai, and this was the place where God came down and made himself known unto the people. The Bible said there were great thunderings and there were great lightnings and, and it's the voice of God that spoke unto the people that day on top of the mountain. We know that from on the top of the mountain that God gave Moses the whole Levitical law and He gave him the Ten Commandments and He gave him the print for the blueprint for the tabernacle, a place of worship, a place of dwelling, a place for the people to come and learn a sacrifice and learn of what it meant to become clean and, and cleansed and for given of their sin, a place of worship. My friend, listen, if they had went the nearest route, if they had went the closest route, they would missed it all and missed what God had in store for them because God was continuing to prove himself to his children time and time and again. He also proved himself to his children through the wilderness when they journeyed for 40 years in the wilderness. The Bible said their shoes didn't wax old, nor did their garments. God continued to provide and prove himself to his people. And through all this, God prepared his people. He prepared them physically. He prepared them mentally and spiritually. He encouraged their faith and their trust in him when they took this path through the wilderness. And when the time came that they finally got to the Jordan River. And they crossed over the Jordan River when God parted the waters for them that day. And when they crossed over Jordan and when they were coming down to when they got into Canaan land on their way, when they got to Jericho and, and when they got down there, man, they marched around the cities and, and we know for seven days and on the seventh day, man, God brought down the walls of Jericho and gave them a great victory. Listen, every army that they faced on their way to the land of Canaan, God whipped everyone one of them and gave them victory. He brought them through. Why? Because he had prepared them for that time in their life by going through the way of the wilderness. I just want to encourage us tonight that God is leading us. God is still leading his people. And God is leading us on a path and in a direction that he wants and that he would have for us to go. And as I said earlier, man, it may not always be the nearest way. It may not always be the closest or the quickest way, but it's the way that God has chosen and the way that God would have for you and I to go just as his people did. Why? To prove himself, to prepare us, to get us ready, to get us where we need to go for him. I like what the Bible continued to say. It said that when they took their journey, not only did they take their journey, but the Bible said in verse 21, it said, and the Lord went before them. God is continuing to go before you and I and prepare and make a way for us, for his people. It said, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. Not only that, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Night. And verse 22 said, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. There was always a divine presence of God that was with the people. And when the cloud moved, the people moved. When the fire by night moved, the people moved. When it rested, when it stayed still, the people rested. They stayed still. They stayed in the place where God was. Church, you and I that have been saved by God's grace, listen. We need to move and go when God is moving and when God is going. 
Not only that, but listen, when God is, when we need to be where God is, we need to be led by the Lord, and we need to follow Him. And just like the camp of Israel, when God moved, they moved and they went with Him. When God stayed still and God rested right there and stayed in that place, they stayed still. They didn't go anywhere without the Lord. Amen? And the divine presence of God leading them and guiding them through their journey. Listen, we're on a journey of life and God is leading us and I encourage us tonight to just continue to follow the leadership of the Lord and to be led by the Holy Spirit of God because God knows exactly the way and the path that He wants to take us and we've got to trust Him and let God lead us. Amen? Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for your word. God, we thank you for the path that you've chosen for us. We thank you, Father, for the way that, Lord, that you have us go. And, Lord, just as the children of Israel, God, they were not ready to go by the way of the Philistines, even though it was the quickest, even though it was the closest way, Lord, they weren't ready. They weren't prepared in all ways. But, Father, Lord, you brought them through the Red Sea and you brought them through the wilderness in 40 years. And, God, you, you made yourself known to them, Lord, on Mount Sinai, the Mount of God. And, Lord, you gave them your law and you gave them your commandments and you gave them a place of worship that they can learn the ways of you, Lord. And, and Lord, you continue to provide for them and take care of them, Lord. You provided for them bread uh, in the morning and quail in the evening, Father. And you gave them the water from the rock, Lord. And, and Lord, their, their garments and their, their shoes, Lord, they didn't wax old or, or they, they along the way. But, God, you just made a way for them and you took care of them. And, and God, you prepared them for each step of their journey and each battle that they faced and each war that they come in contact with, God, you encourage their faith and you strengthen their trust in you. And Father, I pray tonight that, Father, as we as a body of believers, as we as a church, Father, we're on this journey. And God, you're, you're leading us through this time that we're facing. And Lord, I pray that, God, Lord, it may not be the quickest, it may not be the shortest or the easiest way, but Father, help us to go in the path and in the way and in the direction that, God, you'd have us to go. But Father, knowing that Lord, along those ways, you're going to encourage and you're going to strengthen our faith. You're going to encourage and strengthen our trust in you. And you're going to continually, time and time again, God, prove yourself to us over and over. God, we thank you for that. We pray tonight that God, that Lord, just as the children of Israel, Father, as they were led by the, the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night, and God, when the cloud and the, the fire moved, they moved. The camp moved. But God, when it rested and it stayed still, Father, they stayed still. Lord, they didn't go ahead of you. Lord, they didn't linger behind, but yet, Father, they followed you and stayed with you in your divine presence. And I pray that, God, you would help us as a church, Father, to follow you and stay and be with you and be near your presence, Father. We love you and thank you and all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. We thank you for being with us this evening and to join us. Uh, we hope and pray tonight has been a blessing. We want to encourage you to come back and join us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll have a, another online live service right here on Facebook at 11. And we ask that you pray for us. Uh, and we ask that you continue to share this service and continue to be a light and a witness to your family, to your friends, and to your neighbors and those around you. Continue to remember all the requests that's been made. Uh, but we're tonight we're going to close out with a song of invitation uh, by April. So you pray for her and uh, continue to pray for uh, us the rest of this week. And we'll see you again on Sunday.